Hey YouTube, this is my new bike, and as you can tell, I love it. Strava says I have 276 miles on it, so it's time for a review video. I've taken this bike up and down, around, and oh, I've oh, even oh. crashed it. Well, I just crashed. So let's talk about what I love about this bike. The first thing I love about this bike is the No Compromise Build Kit. This is the team edition with all SRAM and RockShox components. Your money goes far because it comes with the top of the line fork, shock, and brakes that you can get from SRAM. Not bad for $4,600. Even the rear DT Swiss 350 hub has been upgraded to the 36 tooth ratchet, which is a really nice touch. The only quote unquote cheaper components on here are the GX Eagle drivetrain and the KS Lab Integra dropper post, both of which do not feel cheap. I've used an X01 Eagle drivetrain and I hardly notice a difference in shifting performance with the new GX Eagle. Also, there's no good reason to spend $400 on a dropper post anymore. There are so many good dropper posts in the $200 to $300 range, and this is definitely one of them. Even the lever is great and not really worth the hassle of upgrading. I like it almost as much as the one made by Wolftooth. So let's talk about the brakes first. I love what they did with this bike and put a 200mm rotor on the front and the back. I don't know why we've been content to have smaller rotors on the rear. Having more stopping power in the rear gives me that much more confidence to cruise at full speed. I also love the oil slick highlights that have been added to the screws and the brake pad spreader spring. All right, let's talk about the rear shock. Now, I haven't opened up the shock and checked for myself, but the commensal website says the shock comes pre-tuned with three bottomless tokens. If this is true, then I believe the rear travel is very linear because even with three tokens, I still regularly use most of the rear travel. Overall, I still like the shock, but without a high-speed compression adjustment, it's hard to make it feel poppy. All right, let's talk about this new Zeb Ultimate fork. It is beefy, and it does have high-speed compression, but so far I haven't had a need to use it. It's different from the Fox 36 because instead of something like 16 clicks that the Fox fork has, it only has 4 clicks of high-speed compression but I've left it at zero because I don't come nearly as close to bottoming out like I do on the Super Deluxe Shock on the same drops. This could be kind of handy, just being able to switch the high-speed compression significantly with just one or two clicks. If you change conditions, if you're going from regular trail riding to park riding, you could just add one or two clicks of compression and easily change your suspension for what you are riding. Now, other than the build kit, what I really like about this bike is the geometry. So with a 63.6 .6 degree head tube angle, this thing is slack and it loves to go straight and fast. But the seat tube angle is 78 and a half degrees, which is super steep. This is super noticeable on the uphill climbs. The bike is quite a bit heavier than most other bikes, but more comfortable to climb with because the steeper seat tube angle puts you in a more powerful position over the pedals. The steeper seat tube angle shortens your effective top tube length, which makes the bike feel small when you're climbing, but then when you get into the attack position, everything opens up and your bike feels big again. But the most important change in the geometry and pretty much the reason why I bought this bike is the reach numbers. On this XL version, the reach is at 520 millimeters. That's 40 millimeters larger than my 2017 Mojo HD4 that was only at 480 millimeters for the XL. On that bike, I was having to put such a large stem that it ruined the handling. And on this bike, the reach is so long that I even had to shorten it from a 40 millimeter stem down to a 33 millimeter stem. And now I love it. At six foot two, 
I'm at the very bottom range for the XL size. And so switching out the stem to something shorter made it perfect. It changed it from feeling like I was riding a tandem bike by myself to the perfect size. So if you are at the bottom range of any of the sizes, I would recommend trying it with a 35 or even shorter stem and see how it feels. So let's talk about the changes that I've made to this bike. The first change was switching out the handlebars to something wider. The original bars are nice, but they are only 780 millimeters wide. I definitely prefer 800, and I think that should just be the standard on any XL model. So I was a little disappointed that the width was not 800 like several other bikes in this range. I do think 800 should be the new standard for any bike this size. The next thing was adding a bash guard. This was definitely needed before I began riding anything rocky. The larger bike was a little awkward at first and I was definitely bashing into things. So I was really glad that I added the bash guard. It would have been nice if it came with one pre-installed because depending on which one you get, you may have to remove the crank to install one and this crank is on tight. You will need a breaker bar to get it off. I did end up changing the tires as well. So I was excited to try out these Schwalbe tires because I've only ever used Maxxis. This bike came with a Magic Mary in the front and a Big Betty in the rear. Now I did like this setup at first, but what I noticed is that the Big Betty is a little bit too soft. It started to wear down a little bit too quickly. I started losing braking traction. So what I did is I put an Asagai on the front and I moved the Magic Mary to the rear. Because let's face it, when Maxxis came out with the Asagai, every other tire became a rear tire. So I like this current configuration. The rolling resistance of the Magic Mary in the rear is pretty bad, but with winter coming, wetter conditions coming, I'm going to leave that on there because I do think it'll be better than the aggressor that I usually have. I also did not like the 2.4 inch width of the tires. With the slacker head tube angle of this bike, you will be leaning your bike over a lot. And I just didn't feel like the 2.4 inch was wide enough. So I'm much happier with a 2.5 inch tire on the front. I gave the saddle a try. I gave it a good try. I left this saddle on here for a lot longer than I thought I would. It's super thin, so it definitely does not look very comfortable. It's not as bad as it looks, but I did eventually end up swapping it out for something with a little bit more comfort. Okay, enough about the bike. Let's take it out for a ride. All right, YouTube. Today on the new Meta AM, we are climbing 8th Street to eventually descend 8th Street Moto Trail or trail number four. This is my least favorite climb ever. So it's probably gonna take a while to get to the top. But I wanna see how this new bike does on my least favorite climb. So far it feels a little bobby, even with the lockout. That's probably this road. So I tried climbing this trail a couple of days ago, but had to abort because there was a clicking noise with every pedal stroke. It wasn't my pedals. It wasn't my cassette. So I just gave up and turned around because there's no way I'm gonna climb this long ass road with a click with every pedal. Turns out it was my derailleur being loose. So pro tip, if you ever notice that your shifting is just slightly out of index, before you start messing with that barrel adjuster, check to see if that derailleur is loose. No more click today.
Are we there yet? No. Long way. <laughs> All right, trail four. Oh. Almost forgot to unlock out my shock. Seat post, is seat post is definitely a little bit slower in the cold. <sighs> It'll warm up a bit when we get down lower. This is probably one of the last good days for this trail. Just had rain. From here on out, it's probably gonna be colder, wetter, eventually snowier. Ah, oh, this definitely feels easier with the uh, steeper seat tube angle. I could barely make it up that on my Ibis. like you can feel you're in a strong climbing position but it's counterbalanced by how big and heavy this thing is mm. It's almost like this trail should have started a little further up the road. Yeah, it feels good on little punchy climbs. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Nope. Now I can't recover on this grade. You can tell this is definitely a motorcycle trail. There's whip to do's.
Whipty freaking do. So loose. Why don't you take it that way no more?
this death grip going on right now. Oh man. 